come here, Jessica. That was a bit, I don't like that. It's a, it, honestly, the Purple Man is a creepy son of a gun. Probably one of the best MCU villains, including like the Netflix shows and the TV and the films. He's probably one of the best up there with Wilson Fisk, Thanos, and Loki. Uh, I mean, Zemo was pretty good and so was Killmonger. But apart from that, most of them, Red Skull as well. People don't give Red Skull, I think, the, the credit he deserves. I, I do like, I do like what they did with him. Uh, they basically made him an <laughs> Oh shit, I've said <laughs> Well, this video is going nowhere. <laughs> but yeah, Jessica Jones season three. Now, I put off watching this season because Honestly, I really disliked season two. I've made, I think I've made a review of every season so far. It was one of the, it came out in the first year I started making YouTube videos, Jessica Jones, and season one for me is my favorite Netflix season, I think. Maybe Daredevil season three might have overtaken it. Um, but up till then, it was my favorite Netflix TV show, TV series. And then they made season two and season two was really bad. Let's not play. It was goddamn awful. I think any hype for the character just got absolutely, absolutely destroyed with that season in particular. And it was my least favorite out of all of them. It, it was very badly put together. So I was hesitant to watch this in case it diminished how I felt about season one of this show. But thankfully, it was a sort of return to form. I think that the season overall was much well fit together. I mean, it was fit together much... Uh, English. I think this season was put together much better than season two. I still think it was nowhere near as good as season one. Uh, which I wasn't expecting it to be as good as season one, especially coming off of Utter Dog Crap. But I think they did some things here which were very interesting. I'll start off with the good things. I think Jessica Jones really fleshed out as a character with this season as well. She was probably the only decent thing about season two and everything else other than Malcolm was a waste of time. And I wish I hadn't watched it. That's how bad it was. It was actually a, uh, a waste of 10 hours of my life. But with this one, they managed to uh, fuck up Malcolm as well. So they took him in a way which I didn't think was necessary and needed. Um, I think that he actually had a likeable character and a likeable story arc. And now, basically, the problem with this show is no one is likeable. Okay, you can, you can support Jessica Jones and you can say she's great, but you have to acknowledge that she's not exactly nice and she's not someone you want to root for. In Daredevil, there's Foggy, who you want to root for. You know, that's the guy who's there. You're like, I want him to do well somehow. In this show, there's no one like that. In, in Iron Fist, there's uh, Jessica Henwick's character, and then there's Finn Jones. You're, you're supporting those characters. You want them to do well. In Luke Cage, there's Luke Cage. You want him to actually win uh, up till the end of season, season two. But in this, there's no character that you really want to win you know you're like i guess jessica jones is the protagonist so she should win she's the hero um but i think that was a problem with the show i think they took away the one element which made it which made it you know f seamlessly work I'll, I'll put it like that because you need a character like that to make you become attached to them because i think I didn't want it to happen. I'm glad they didn't go this way. They didn't kill Malcolm in, in the season. But if they'd kept him as a good guy, not a, he wasn't a bad guy in the show, but if they'd kept him as the almost moral compass in a way of the show, and he'd, had, and he'd been killed off, it would have meant a lot. And I'm glad they didn't choose to kill him, because you, you don't need to kill characters for the, just for the sake of it. But yeah, they took away that element, which I think hindered the structure of the show slightly. I mean, Trish also now becoming Hellcat, which was fine, um, you know, I didn't really love it at the end of the last season, but they actually produced a cohesive story here with that. Again, not the way I exactly expected it to go, um, but apparently everyone just gets chucked on the raft now if they're superpowered. So it's this odd scenario where the TV shows are like, yeah, 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 we're connected to the films, and the films are like, what TV shows? What are you on about, mate? Almost four years ago now, the first season of these shows came out with Daredevil season one. 
Damn, man. Four years is a long time. Wow. I didn't used to have a beard. And now I have a beard. It's damn weird, isn't it? It is sad that this was the last Marvel Netflix show. I think that overall they've been very, very fun. I think that they've been TV that we wouldn't have seen if they'd been, uh, they'd been run on traditional uh, cable TV. Especially Daredevil, I think it's become a cultural phenomenon of sorts. And I think it'll go down for the next... 10 years or so as as that and and be in that ilk of those types of shows i just hope that somehow they might be able to be resumed one day because they do have fan bases even though jessica jones iron fist and luke cage are much lesser known entities and they have much smaller uh Critical acclaim, I would say. I think most people agree that Daredevil is the best show out of all of them. I think The Punisher is probably second best. But this has not really turned into a Jessica Jones review. It's just turned into a Marvel Netflix shenanigans. Great. I really love to go off topic. I feel like I could have a podcast. You know, I just, just speak about random shit when I'm supposed to speak about something else. I swear, that's just that's what Joe Rogan does, I guess, isn't it? He just natters on about something and then it'll just be like, but baseball. All right. Okay, so we're talking about the time-space continuum weed. Like, all right, all right, Joe. <laughs> okay, uh, at least there's some some semblance of uh, a linearness to this uh, nerd. That's basically it. One of the main reasons it was better than season two is yes, it was political, and Jessica Jones is definitely the most political out of all of these shows. But it was considerably less political than season two. Season two was ramming a certain object that looks like a carrot down your throat and just trying to make you submit I'll, i'm not ha i wasn't having it it was so much at so many points i almost turned off the show this one was much less much more nuanced but to say it was much more nuanced is, is too much of a too much praise it, it, it wasn't really that nuanced it was just less smack in the face stupid as, as Jessica Jones season two. And I think that helped get through the show. I do think the action scenes looked pretty good on whole. There were one or two shots where you can see they really tried with the budget and, and it, it just didn't look right. But just stick to what you know, Netflix, with these types of shows and, and ABC who produced it. Go with the low budget stuff. Go with the dark scenes because you know you can do them. Really, if you think about it, they could be shifted over to Hulu which would be great uh, because Disney owns a majority share in Hulu as well now. They just own everything. I don't think it's something that will, that will be put on Disney Plus. So maybe, you know, in a couple of years time, we'll be able to revisit these characters and get extra seasons of them. But I, I just feel that with Spider-Man growing up now in the MCU, there's a chance, a small one, that maybe like a Daredevil could pop up in a Spider-Man film. I know it probably doesn't fit the tonality of it, but if Spider-Man's going away from the 17-year-old Spider-Man and might be going closer to the 20-year-old Spider-Man, then why can't Matt Murdock show up as like a lawyer? If you saw like Far From Home, the way it ended, I think he might be needing a lawyer, someone who's versed in superhero law. So maybe Matt Murdock's the guy. I don't know. I think it's a very, 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 very far stretch. But we can always just hope and dream that these things will actually come about. And with Kevin Feige in charge, he's not done us wrong till now, other than Captain Marvel and Ant-Man and the Wasp and Iron Man 2 and Thor The Dark World. Yes. But other than those, I think every other film has been pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. Yeah. Uh... Great review. This is going really well. So, uh, yeah, better than the last season. Not as good as the first season. Pretty bang average, to be honest. Probably like a 6 out of 10. Nothing special here with this one. Um, I think it was hard to live up to the heights of season 1 and they haven't been able to do it. But I will always remember watching season 1 of Jessica Jones. Yeah. Creep me the fuck out. Anyway, guys. If you'd enjoy this video, <laughs> this has gone in a weird way. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel down there. If you didn't, if you didn't, then Jessica Jones herself will come after you. And you don't want that, you already know that. Just subscribe anyway to avoid that. No, I've been no ranger of the comic. You have been great. I'll see you next time. Skadoosh.